Welcome to the New Monks. This podcast is dedicated to those of us on the journey of evolution. Through these episodes, we will dive into the lives of individual people and discover what they have learnt and how they have handled their growth. We believe that we all have wisdom to be shared with each other and can learn from listening to each other's stories. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, if you feel like leaving us a review and sharing the love, that would be greatly appreciated. So this is just a heads up because, you know, there's a lot of information that is coming to light at the moment. And through these episodes, each person is going to share a different side of that for them. Now, this isn't to say that every single thing that is shared here is going to be 100% accurate, you know, it's just not where we are right now, it's just not the case of the unravelling and the disclosures that are being revealed to us. Obviously, things are always, always changing, and in one moment something can be so real and so true, and the next moment is completely shifted and changed into something else. This is the journey of evolution, this is the journey of incension that we are going through right now. So, this is just an invitation that you're discernment is really really important as always as usual please take what resonates and leave the rest thank you hi and welcome back to the new monks podcast today i am talking to pete who is the founder of the sovereign project if you haven't already and you're new to all this information about the legal system and common law, this is a really, really great place to start. I found a lot of information there on his website and it's all free. Just uh, join the members area and just read. So in this episode, we just talk about his journey over the past three decades of researching and finding more information. He was right at the start when the internet began and just really started questioning everything and digging really deep and finding out more and more and more and more where he was finally able to put a lot of different pieces of the puzzle together to finally be able to offer a um, platform for other people to learn more. And ultimately what it is, is just really understanding, really learning about the legal system and how much of a con this whole system that we are born into is set up. So there's a lot of information in here. He speaks a lot on the legalities and the definitions and the language and what things truly mean. So take it in, take it all in. There's a lot of information. Ultimately, this is a journey that we all have to travel individually and separately in finding our true sovereignty. And I feel like this is really one part of the path of reclaiming our sovereignty. So yeah, enjoy the episode. Definitely check out his website because there's a lot more that he's creating as well. Thank you. Hi Pete, thank you so much for being here and taking your time. So how I normally begin is just to just take a few deep breaths in and out. Yeah. And then just turn good. Off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No worries. Good to check in. <laughs> and then, yeah, just tell us how you're feeling right now. Say again? And then tell us how you're feeling right now. Me? <laughs> feeling great. <laughs> um, busy. You know, I haven't stopped for a year. 
you know, since the Sovereign Project was set up. So, um, but yeah, good. So the, the fear is gone, put it that way. Well, the fear was gone for me for many years. So, um, but the fear is gone for a lot of people now. When they understand how the system works, the fear goes away. And it's almost, almost becomes comical. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love how you started because I feel like fear is such a big thing right now. And it's really overcoming it. And I don't, do you want to talk about your process with that and how yeah, you managed sure. to overcome? Yeah, 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 sure. No worries. It's, um, well, fear, you've got to battle with fear. That's, it's, um, it's not easy to stand your ground. Okay. So there's a lot of people out there living in fear. They don't know what to do and they don't want to stand their own ground, you know, which you'll live in fear forever. You have to stand up to the bully one day. Okay. We've probably all gone through that in school. You, you know, you've been picked on at school. And what do you do? You've got two choices. Do you run away or do you stand up to the bully? So um, I won't go into my personal details, but yeah, I stood up to the bully and got into trouble quite a lot at school. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I've been fighting ever since. So it's fighting, uh, it might be a, a, a company that I work for that try and uh, impose um, contracts onto me that I never agreed to. So I've always stood my ground on that, you know, got in trouble. I don't care. You know, I'll just go and get myself another job anyway. So I'm not particularly bothered. Um, but yeah, you've got to stand your ground. Uh, you've got to question things. Don't be a doormat. Don't be told what to do. Um, I know it's difficult. Uh, it's not easy. But the more you do it, the better you get at it as well. And the more you learn, so you can defend yourself easier and quicker. Mm -hmm. So... What about yourself? Do you stand your ground? Do you, um, you know, take on the fight? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I try, definitely. Yes. I, and especially now with this period of time, I think, I don't know, there was something in me that was just like, no, 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 you can't just let this slide. I've been quite vocal online. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you got to speak out. Um, you, you've got to stand your ground and you've just got to do it. All right. It, it might give you some heat. All right, fair enough. But the thing is, is people got to wake up because the, the people behind government, remember government doesn't exist, it's a legal fiction. That's another thing people have got to stop fearing. It doesn't exist, okay? Once you get that out of the way, the people behind government, they use fear to control you. They've made it very clear that they're going to take everything from us in this decade. All right, we have heard it all. Klaus Schwab, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. We know that. Okay, fine. They've made their determination. That's what they're going to do. Well, we're going to fight then. You've got two choices. You sit back and say, all right, then take all my stuff. Or you say, well, no, I'm not putting up with this. Mm -hmm. And that's what people have to do. And that's what I've decided. And I'm very vocal about it. And I've got my website. And um, that's what I work towards. Uh, I've had enough. Uh, I'm not going to be a doormat. I'm not going to be told what to do. Uh, I'm not going to be ripped off anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want the wars to carry on in the Middle East. I'm sick of it. Um, you know, the paedophilia to end. I've, I've had enough of that. Um, so I, I'm done. It's mm -hmm. time to fight. And I want people to join and um, let's all stand together He's as equals and fight together. And I'm not talking fighters in violence. We can do this through our paperwork. Okay, that's what I teach people. Um, I show them how you can stand your ground against corporations when they come at you with uh, bogus documentation through the post. And I'll show you how to read. Most people can't read. <laughs> so a lot of people think they can read again. They can't because <laughs> you're reading English. That's not even English. So I'll teach people how to read. And then when you can read, you can decide and uh, decipher that a lot of the documentation that is sent through your post is in fact bogus and fraudulent. Mm -hmm. When you're in that position, you can start going after these corporations or actually the people behind the corporations. That's the trick. Okay. Corporations don't exist. They're legal fictions. Okay. Government doesn't exist. Once you can do that, once you can push that to one side and you, send, and you start asking questions and you start saying things like, who is saying I have to pay them? Who is saying I've got to do the thing? When you put a name to them, they'll start running because they are cowards. All right. So that's what uh, the Sovereign Project is all about. Mm. I mean, I think a lot of what you're saying it requires an individual to take responsibility. Yes. Like you're saying here, I've had enough, you know. Yes. But it, and everything you listed is like I've personally had enough of this. Yes, <laughs> you know, and yes. then, and I think a lot of the time we don't realize that we can even say that. You know, 
A lot of people don't. Um, that's the problem. They, they just put up with it. But it makes you miserable. All right? So what is going, what's going on? The reason why you're miserable is because you're not standing your ground. You, you, you know you've let yourself down. Okay? You know something's wrong. You're being bullied. You're being harassed and all the rest of it. And you, you just take it. And like in your subconscious, if you like, if it's your spirit, call it what you will, your soul is shouting at you internally and saying, look, you feel rubbish because you're not standing your ground. Okay. If you stand your ground, yes, it's frightening. It is the first time you ever do it, it is, and I've done it many, many times. Okay. And every time I do it, heart's going. But when you win, you feel fantastic. Mm-hmm. You get your confidence. And then you can you'll do it again and again and again. Doesn't mean you'll win every time. We can have our losses, it's not a problem, but you lose, you pick yourself up, you have another go. Okay. But this is why people are so miserable because they're letting themselves down. They know. They're letting themselves down. They don't like how they're being treated, but they won't do anything about it. So they feel internally bad. Um, and then they'll just turn to like drugs or alcohol or something like that as a distraction. And then they go down into an even worse um, pit of uh, despair and um, depression. So yeah, you've got to stand your ground. That's what sovereign means, okay? It means that no one has authority over you. You stand your own ground um, and you govern yourself. Being sovereign means you take responsibility for your life, right? So if something happens in your life, it's your responsibility to sort it. When you make a decision in your life, it's your responsibility for whatever that decision is. The outcome of that decision is your responsibility, okay? I don't want anyone to listen to me and just do things because I say so. Mm -hmm. If you do that, your mindset's all wrong. Mm -hmm. You're not sovereign, (laughs) okay? Don't do things because I say do it, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't even say that. I don't even tell people what to do. I just give you some information and go, there you are. That might help you on your own personal journey. Okay. But yeah, you've got to be self-governing uh, and responsible for your own life. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Well, that's their decision. It's their choice. And it's not going to end well for them. Yeah. So. I'd love to. Yeah. So one of my friends sent me the Sovereign Project and last year, I think. Okay. And yeah, the website is amazing. I learned so much just from reading everything in the membership portal there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Put the link below. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what was your process like well, before you discovered? There's a lot of information, you know, when it comes to the legal system. Oh yes. You know, before you were doing that, what you know, where were you? What? Um. Well, you know, I'm um, I'm a, I'm an engineer. That's that's what I do. I'm not a lawyer or solicitor I don't actually want to be because uh, when you actually realize what these lawyers and solicitors and barristers really do uh, I don't know how these people do it um, I actually know people who used to be lawyers and solicitors and can't do it anymore because their conscience says I can't do this because mm. it's, uh, it's fraudulent what they do um, but we don't need to go into that now uh, but yeah I'm just an engineer I'm just an average Joe if you like you know I've left left home when I was 16 so you know I'm just looking after myself since then and um all I've done is whenever a problem comes into my life, I will go out and solve it. This is what I think you should do. When you when you live your life, if a problem hits you, then you go, right, I've got a problem now. I'm going to have to find the solution. I'm going to have to deal with this. And a lot of people don't want to do that. So, and that's the problem. But if you carry on, if you did that early on, then you you learn, you become more confident, and then you are you are now able to resolve situations, okay? So that's all I did is, and then I just started researching, probably when the the um, invention of the internet. Wow. So when the, that's when it came in, yeah. <laughs> so uh, when the internet first basically sprang up, which I think was early 90s, 92 or something. Yeah. Um, you know, people were just getting into the internet. Oh, what's this new internet thing, you know? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> everyone was talking about what's an email. No one knew the difference between what an email was or what a website was. What's yeah. this? So I thought, oh, I'm going to get into this. I like the sound of this internet thing. Um, So, yeah, I got myself a computer, a little, you know, um, desktop computer sort of thing, you know, tower, built that up. Uh, Got myself a little 56K modem. (laughs) So very slow. (laughs) Off I went. I think there's only like 2,500 websites or something back then when it, it, you know, when it first started. And that's it. Uh, And then I just started learning. Um, so every time I needed a solution, I'd go to the internet, find some information, and then that's how it went. And what it was as well is I never trusted the TV. 
I used to watch TV when I was younger. Obviously. I don't watch TV anymore. Completely given up TV now since 2015. Never watched it since. Mm. So the TV was, I didn't get on with it. Um, it was mainly the news. You know, I kept watching the news. And like, these people are lying to me. They're, they're telling me, you could just tell, you know. And it was the uh, global warming stuff they were pumping out. And I had an understanding of physics and thermodynamics because I'm, I'm an engineer. And uh, they were telling me all this CO2 stuff is warming the planet. And that's not how it works. So I had to go and do some research and got to the bottom of it and find out it's a complete scam. Um, and then it just carried on. And then I discovered about money, how money actually works. Mm, that's big. That, that is big. That is big. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> when I discovered that, I was like, oh, my God, we don't even use money. When I discovered that, and yeah. we use something called fiat currency, which is um, a debt-based Ponzi scheme. It's literally a debt-based Ponzi scheme. It's notes of debt. And um, when I discovered that, I went, oh, my God. Um, and I realized that it was going to be reset in this decade. This is years ago, probably oh. 2010, I reckon, is when I started discovering fiat currency. And I was researching. How did you know it was going to be reset? It had to be, um, because it's a Ponzi scheme. Uh-huh. So. When I discovered it, because uh, it's debt-based, um, what happens is, is every note is a note of debt. But the thing is, it has interest on it as well. And you go, well, hang on a minute. If the monetary, if the monetary system itself is debt-based and every note is a note of debt that requires interest, where do you get the money from to pay the interest? You have to print more notes, don't you? And then you print more notes and you go, well, if you're printing more notes, there's interest to pay on that as well. So it's exponential. So the more notes you print, the more notes you need to pay the interest on the debt. Mm. And I was looking at this, I was going, oh my God, this is a Ponzi scheme. This is going to collapse. So I looked at the national debt and it was in the trillions on all these different countries. Um, and I started really researching the financial system and it looks like it's going, to, it's going to go exponential by 2025. Now, exponential basically means it's like feedback on a speaker. You know, when you get your microphone, yes. yeah, and it goes, whoop, and the sound is like, oh, yeah. and that's how it, that's exponential because the sound wave is just doubling, 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 and just goes out of control. Um, and that's what's going to happen with this fiat currency system in this decade. So I knew they were going to reset it back then. You know, I knew something that they were going to do something, and that's what they're doing. That's what all this um, yeah. pandemic is all about. It's a distraction. Um, the Ukraine thing is a distraction. We see prices going up now, right? You see petrol's gone up, um, electricity, gas has doubled, food's going up, everything's going up. Well, what technically is actually happening is that the, uh, the prices aren't going up. The pound is being devalued. Mm. That's what's actually going on. So you're, it's being devalued. So this has been going on for decades, the pound is being devalued, meaning that the prices go up. That's what inflation is. So inflation is the inflation in the monetary system for the supply of money or mm. notes. The, the more notes they put into the system, the larger the inflation. That causes price inflation where the price is going up. So it's happening. This decade is going to be horrendous. This is just the beginning. I can see a loaf of bread going, I don't know, 100 pound, 200 quid for a loaf of bread, that sort of stuff. It depends how far they want to take it before they bring in the new system. But your fiat notes aren't going to be worth a great deal. Mm. So um, I was trying to warn people um, multiple ways. I was trying to warn people, speaking out. Like most, po- most people thought I was a crazy person. Was this so, before? Before, yeah. I was saying back in 20. 20- 15, I was saying to friends and family, I was saying to put stuff on Facebook and all this sort of stuff, you know, um, says, you know, we're going to go into hyperinflation. Um, I said, the bond market's going to break. You're going to have a stock market crash, except the stock market is going to crash upwards, not downwards this time. So it's going to be a crash up because the currency is going to crash. So when the currency crashes, the actual unit price of stocks go up because obviously the value of the notes is worthless. Mm-hmm. So you need more notes to buy the stock. Yeah. So it looks like it's going up. Something's going, oh, look, the stock market's going up. And I go, no, no, no. The currency is devaluing faster than the value of the stock. So that's another that's another topic. But yeah, I was warning people. And I said, um, I said it might be a good idea to diversify your wealth. So I said, um, it might, this is what I've done anyway. So 
I said, my, might be a good idea to get your savings, your life savings. But my life savings wasn't making me anything. You know, I was getting 1% or something, 2% of that. And I worked out that the correct rate of inflation back then was running at about 5, 5%. So if you're getting 2% on your insure, uh, sorry, on your life savings, you're getting 2%, uh, but the true rate of inflation is, is 5%. That's a negative interest rate on your savings. So you'll see how that works. So your savings is being devalued by 3% every year. Mm -hmm. I thought, I'm losing money. But saving money in the bank, I'm losing it. I'm losing the, the value of it. So I got into gold and silver, got into some crypto. That's done quite nicely. <laughs> mm -hmm. But gold and silver, I think, is going to be ballistic. At the end of this decade, some, some experts say that gold could be £20,000 an ounce. Something like that coming, it's about what 1450 for an ounce, roughly. Wow, so you could be looking at 20,000 an ounce, something like that. Could be more, but um, yes, I've been wanting about this for a long time. <laughs> so, just to rewind, you said about the fiat currency and yep. the, the Ponzi scheme. So, this is because if there's no like physical thing, there's no right? wealth, it's yeah. no value. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's why it's fiat currency so the word fiat is a uh, uh, latin and it means by decree mm -hmm. so what's going on is the government decrees it has value it doesn't have value at all if it has a negative value it's actually a debt um so these notes of debt or promissory notes they're promises to pay all right this is where we've got to get into the language that these politicians use and why i say the average person out there uh, can't read because they don't recognize legal terminology mm -hmm. So that's why this is why they get confused. All right. They don't know how it works. So, for example, the pound, the pound note, if you like, is referred to as legal tender. tender yes. All right. So you go, OK, so what does legal tender mean? First of all, the word legal always refers to a contract. And you go, oh, OK, so legal refers to a contract. Right. So if it's legal, if something is legal, then that means there is a contract somewhere that's the policy is being written down. Okay, that's what the word legal means. In fact, the word legal, everything legal is contract. Okay, it means there's a contract somewhere referring to it. But the actual word itself comes from uh, biblical times and it actually means um, the undoing of God's law. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so that's what legal means. Wow. So those of you out there who are religious, um, but that's what it means because you have law, lawful. And you have legal. Okay, mm -hmm. legal is in a contract only. Lawful, law is unwritten and unspoken. If you like divine law, natural law, that sort of stuff, it's not written down. So we go back to this legal tender thing, and you go, okay, so it's legal tender. That means that it exists in a contract. Then it says the word tender. And you go, what does tender mean? Basically, what that means is you are not actually satisfying the debt, you're actually moving it into the future. All right. So if you're using a, yeah, so if you use legal tender, okay, mm -hmm. you're entering into a contract that I will actually pay that debt in the future. I haven't paid it. I haven't paid it. Okay. So that's what legal tender means. So people don't understand that either. So now here's the thing is the, the, the notes. Yeah, I've got a note here. Here you go. 10 pound note. 10 pound note, right? This is literally worthless. All right. <laughs> it really is. I mean, a lot of people think this is a promissory note. But because of the dog Latin that's on here and the different fonts and all the rest of the garbage, it's, this is basically a coloured bit of plastic paper wow. with no value at all, all right, at this point. All right? Now, a promissory note is supposed to be a contract where you agree to pay someone in the future. It's like an IOU. Yeah. So um, let's say you do a favour for me. Okay, you do a favour for me. Then I'll say, okay, I'll write you down an IOU and I will owe you a favour in return. And that would be that. Okay, yes. that's what I'm doing. So if I actually give you this, that is a promise to pay. It even says on there, even though they've shrank the the, 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 re the lettering is so small, you can't even basically see it. But it says it's a promise to pay. I promise to pay the bearer the sum of ten pounds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you go, this is what I started asking years ago because I went, all right then, ten pounds of what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It says ten pounds. I'm like, okay, what am I getting? Ten pounds of what? And of course, the word pound is actually referring to a weight, right? Yes. It is a weight. Okay. So I want to know what am I getting? Now, originally, 
um, our currency um, in Britain was uh, based on silver. All right. So when you've got a promissory note, I promise to pay you. Yeah. It was a note to pay in pounds of silver. Wow. So this is supposed to be 10 pounds of silver. Now, an ounce of silver is what, 25 quid off the top of my head, something like that. So a few pounds, 10 pounds of silver, you add that up. You're yeah. going to buy a lot of, lot of beers with 10 pounds of silver. Okay. Yeah. So everyone's forgotten that. Everyone's been brainwashed. They've forgotten because they should say, well, what am I getting? 10 pounds of what? What am I getting? And it should be getting silver. So the government has taken the silver away. We're yeah. all now just pay, passing around worthless bits of paper plastic. And they're not even genuine contracts at this point. Yes. The people behind this don't even want to be liable for it. So they've changed the fonts. For example, there's a little thing here. You might see the 10. Yeah. Do you see that the pound sign is smaller than the 10? Yeah. That's because those two things don't go together. If you see some um, font sizes in, you know, say, a sentence, You've got a big font and then you've got a little font. They're separate. They're not part of the same sentence. So that pound sign is not part of that 10. So you, you have a pound sign, which is a small font, and you have a number 10. But people read that as 10, 10 pounds. And it's the same on the back. You, you've got different fonts on the back. You've got the 10 pounds see it written on the bottom there where it says 10. That's mm -hmm. one yeah. font. And then underneath, that's a script that's um, italic or cursive script because yeah. it's slanted. Two different fonts. It does not say ten pounds. So what is? Why is that? If the different fonts make it completely separate things? Yes, because it goes against the grammar of English. Mm. Right. So this is a thing that you've probably heard of grammar schools. Yeah. Yeah. So back in the day, even before I was born, we used to have grammar schools in this country. OK, this is where children went to school and they learned grammar. Grammar, in layman's terms, is the rules of a language. All right. That's what it is. Um, I think in this country, um, the grammar schools ended in 1968, I believe. After that, you just didn't No one, no, no children went to grammar schools unless you were rich and you went to Eton or, you know, these posh schools. Then you continued to report grammar and you were taught latin this oh. is not taught to the average person today you're not taught latin you're not taught grammar so my sister went to a grammar school <laughs> oh right did you know wow okay but she i mean it was called that school. oh yeah it was probably called grammar school but the bet they didn't get taught grammar yeah maybe not yeah probably but, not because i think the um uh, the actual um it's what grammar schools were it goes goes back decades is it was supposed to teach children the rules of the language when it yeah. first when they first started that's why they're called grammar schools and then eventually they removed the grammar over time over time and then basically 1968 or whenever it was they got rid of the grammar school altogether uh -huh. and i don't even know what they teach in schools anymore they teach <laughs> nothing nothing yeah, yeah. i went to school i learned nothing i learned less than nothing because the stuff they tried to teach me was wrong i mm -hmm. had to deprogram myself yeah man so yeah, so the, uh, there's a there's a document on my website called the Pleptorial System. Okay, so if you download that, it's free. Um, download that. That will go into how these people behind government um, deceive you using bad language, all right? Well, using all caps. Here's another thing in, in grammar, for example, English grammar. If you see anything that is in all caps so the lettering is all caps all right something like if i if i do if i write something like this um so i've just written the word cat in all caps all right yeah. not the greatest handwriting but you should see that. <laughs> this is, that is the word cat in all caps however it does not say cat not in english because it violates the grammatical uh rules of english that is an acronym, C-A-T. So it doesn't say CAT. So because that's an acronym, that means that every letter refers to a word. Yeah. So the C must refer to something. The A must refer to something. And the T must refer to something, right? So what a lot of people are, people are doing is they get documentation sent, sent through. It could be a part of Tickets Freedom Ticket. And a whole lot of it is written in all caps. And they're making the mistake of reading that as English. And it's not even English. So another one would be uh, summons to court. 
how many people have received that through the post? And then it says someone's to call, but it's in all caps. So you go, it's not English. <laughs> and then the documentation that gets sent to your post, uh, through your post, most of it's not even signed. Yeah. There's no signature. But people are responding to it. And I go, why are you responding to it? <laughs> if you don't have a signature, I know it's simple. You know, when I talk about this, people go, why didn't I see that? Yes. So I, see, I get that a lot. People go, oh, God, you know, pennies yeah. drop. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like it's such a process of just, you have to, to really think creatively. Like, okay, hang on, what's going on here? What, you know, what are the yeah. roots that are available? <laughs> you do. You just got to stop and think. Because mm. here's the thing. If you deal with the government, okay, and you fill out their forms, what do they always ask for? Your signature. Yeah. They always want your signature, okay? If you don't sign it, they will not deal with you. Say, you've not signed it, here, send it. And they'll send it back to you and say, you've not signed it, you've got to sign it. But when they, the people behind government, send us documentation, there's no signature. So why do we have to deal with it? We don't. Yeah, That's the truth. What I think I learned from your um, website, you need two signatures, right? For, the for con a contract. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Absolutely correct. So... If you receive a letter, or we'll just touch on, on signatures, it's very, very simple. So if you receive a document through the post, okay, the very first thing you should ever do is look for a signature. It has to be signed in, in ink. They physically have to have written on the paper. It's got to be signed. And underneath that signature, the name of the person must be written in title case English, right? Because then you will know who sent it to you, and then you will you can ascertain obligation and authority. Because if you've just got a documentation sent to you through the post and you don't know who sent it, then you can't ascertain obligation. Because I don't know who sent it. I don't know if I've got a contract with them. I don't know who they are. Do they have the right to even send me this document? And of course, no. So you send it back and say, I can't deal with this until I get a signature. Okay, if, if more people did that, they would not be in the trouble they are in today. Right. And then another thing as well, is, I think, is, is the signature needs to be by a human, right? Not just That's right. Yeah. That's right. It has to be written by a man or woman, okay, with a, with a pen, um, not copied. You know, you can't have a stamped signature or a, an e-signature, all right, or anything like that. You can't have a photocopy. The reason being is this is how it all works. This is going back thousands of years, right? Yeah. A piece of paper with just some writing on it is toilet paper. It has no meaning, none. doesn't matter what is written on it. It has no meaning until someone signs it. As soon as they put their mark on it, their sign of nature, signature, sign of nature, once they put their oh, sign wow. of nature. Oh, sign of nature, I love that. <laughs> that's, what, that's right. As soon as they put their sign of nature on that document, they charge the document. They give the document life. They've now put their word onto the document. Yeah. Because we it's are that. the life. Yes. That's, that's right. That's it. You've charged the document with your sign of nature. So without a signature or sign of nature, you're dealing with worthless pieces of paper that have no value, none at all, none. Okay. It's the signature that gives the value to the document. If there's no signature and if it's not actually been done with a pen by someone's hand, it's worthless. It's worthless. Try it going to a court of law, even in the legal system where they don't even deal in law, they leave, uh, they deal in administrative courts and uh, corporate courts. Even in that corrupt legal system, they will not accept documentation that's not got a signature on it. So why do I have to? Mm. Of course I don't. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. So yes, the last part, part of sovereign means I made the decisions. Yeah. If someone's going to send me bits of paper through the post, I'm, not, I'm going to need a signature. No signature, I'm not dealing with it. I'll send it back and I'll say, look, I've had to deal with this. I've had to send it back and I'm going to charge you 350 quid administration costs. <laughs> People love that. The fact that you can start charging these corporations because they're sending you bogus documentation that does not, is not, not lawful and it's not even legal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what we deal with in the uh, Sovereign Workshop on a Thursday night. Um, we do it every week. Um, I go through all this. I teach people. 
um, and it works. These people probably a few months ago in the summer probably didn't know any of this. Now they've learned this and they're using it and they're actually having victories. Mm. Things are happening. As soon as they stand their own ground and say, look, I'm not putting up this documentation. No, no, no. Things start happening. And that's when the corporations start folding. And it's mm. great. These people say, oh, well, I've done this, I've done that, and I've won, and they've let me do this. And <laughs> they feel great. <laughs> and it's your power. Yeah. I didn't do it. You did it. Yeah. I mean, it's quite amazing because, I, I mean, where you started was money. I feel like that is literally where it all begins. And, yes. Um, I mean, when I went through your website, I just realized, wow, it's all a con. Like the whole thing. <laughs> like the whole it system. Is. It's just like, whoa. And then to completely to find your way, how, you know, kind of like out of it, really. Yes. Yes, there is a way out. Um the entire system, the entire legal system, this is what people don't understand, is that the legal system, remember the word legal. The legal, the word legal means you are operating within a contract. All right. So if you're ever told, oh, you can't do that because it's illegal, the mm -hmm. next question you should ask is, well, show me the contract then. See, the, the police only deal in commerce. And this is something I discovered. Mm -hmm. That the police do not deal in law. Never have, never will. OK, they deal in commerce. Commerce is trade between corporations. That's what commerce is. That's why they use the language that you will find within contracts. So that when they pull you over, they'll say you did an uh, illegal U-turn. And you'll go, well, hang on a minute. What do you mean a legal U-turn? Where exactly is the contract that I signed and you signed, PC constable, whatever, where I agree that was going to be an illegal action? Mm -hmm. If there's no contract, then it's not illegal for me. OK, so you've got people who are brainwashed, they're running around going, oh, it's illegal to do this, illegal to do that. And I go, well, did you agree? Did you sign a contract saying so? No, mm. you if you didn't sign it, then it's not illegal for you. Mm. There's other things that people don't understand, like the word license. Yeah. The word license means asking permission. So when you discover that, you go, oh, so if I'm asking permission, who is it that I'm asking permission from? So then you go, yeah, you start asking these questions. And you go, so if it's my car and I own it, in quotes, I own it. Yeah, yeah. Official now, yeah, because we'll get into that if we've got time. Uh, yeah, official, official narrative if I own it. So, yeah, official narrative. If it's my car, then why do I need a license to drive it? Who am I asking permission from? To drive my property makes no sense makes no sense here's another one <laughs> marriage license <laughs> oh yeah tell me about this <laughs> marriage license right right typically in a normal wedding or marriage there's yeah. two people getting married there'll be a man and a woman getting married they've already asked each other <laughs> They basically already said yes. So they're in agreement, right? Yeah. So why do they need a license to get married? Who is it they are asking permission from to get married? Think about that. If, if the man and the woman have both agreed and the marriage has to be between them two, there's no one else involved. Why do they need permission to get married? And here's the thing, they don't. They don't need a permission, permission, and you don't need a license. So this is how it works. Because people have been brainwashed, they don't stop and think. They don't even know what the word license means. All right? They just think, oh, I need a marriage license. Really? Well, you're just asking permission from someone. Yes. That's what it means. That's what license means. So you're asking permission. Mm. So I go, well, who is it you're asking permission from? And that would be the government. Mm. And there's the thing. The government is a legal fiction doesn't exist mm. <laughs> so you're asking a legal fiction that only exists on paper whether or not you can get married so these people they pay for it i think it's you know you gotta pay for it you get your get your marriage license okay okay great got my marriage license but here's what's going on is you're not actually getting married so two people the man and the, the woman think they're actually getting married like a, a union of two living beings two living souls no that's not what's going on. You're actually entering into a corporate merger. 
<laughs> yeah. So what's going on is here's another thing about your surname. Okay, your surname, you don't own it. Mm-hmm. So when you say surname, you go, well, I don't have a surname because a surname I don't own. I have a family name. That's different. Surname is owned by the Vatican. They own wow. the surname. <laughs> like yes. in the whole world. Everything. Yes. Yes. So they own all the they own all the surnames. It all comes down to the Vatican. <laughs> it does. The Vatican's a bank. Wow. That's what it is. It's a bank. And they own your surname. And so if you want uh, permission to get married, what you're actually doing is asking permission to merge two corporations together. Wow. Which is what, so, yeah, I know, I know. So that's the man's surname and, of course, the woman's surname. And they're going to do a corporate merger. And then, of course, the, the woman's going to take on the man's corporate name. So it's now under one corporate name. But here's the thing. It is that corporation that's just been created using the surnames is now owned and controlled by the state, the government. Mm-hmm. They own it. They control it. That's what you've done. So you've done a corporate merger. You've blended, if you like, or dropped one of the names. The, 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 wife, the wife has dropped her corporate name. She's taken on the corporate name of her husband, which is now under the control of the state. The government then uses your marriage certificate. It's because you get a certificate once you get married. <laughs> <laughs> Takes this certificate and they securitize it, which means they place a debt upon it. They then sell this debt on the stock market. You've agreed that this is what you've done. You've done a corporate merger. You've just created a new bond. The bond is a debt. And then the government floats it on the stock market and people buy your marriage. <laughs> and then when you pay your income tax, you're liable to pay the interest on that debt. That's what income tax is all about. <laughs> That's so crazy. Think you know about what? it. Think about it for a minute. You know when you get a divorce? Yeah. Say you get married. Who do you turn to if you need a divorce? The government. Yeah. You have to ask permission from the government to do it. And the government says, oh, you've got to stay apart for six months. You've got to do this, that. You've got to follow all these rules. That's because they control the relationship. They control the corporate manager. I mean, you know what? So I, I never understood that part of marriage, of this signing of a contract. I was like, why do you need to put it in this legal thing? Like, doesn't Correct. make sense to me. There's and two now, ways. This, that's right. You're absolutely correct. So if you need a if you need a marriage license and you get a marriage certificate, then that is a corporate merger. That's what you've done. And you've merged with the state. OK, now people can get married if they wish. Um, they can do it two ways without the license. You don't need a license. Okay? Yeah. And you don't need a certificate. All right. But if you truly want to get married, as in two living beings want to create a new union, you know, um, there's two ways of doing it. One is through affidavit. Mm. All right, so you would do an affidavit of marriage. That's a living marriage. That's you declaring that you've married the other person. So the and two you people... can create that yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. You can... This is a thing as well. This is what people have got to wake up to. Everyone out there has been brainwashed into thinking if they want to do something, they have to get a form from somewhere yes. else to do it. Yeah. See? And I say, yeah. stop that. Yeah. You don't get a form from somewhere else. You use your paperwork. Mm. You use your, you control your jurisdiction, your dominion. You write it down on your paperwork. Your paperwork is more powerful than anyone else's. So an affidavit, you create yourself. You you write in there, marriage of affidavit, your affidavit of marriage. You write it out. You put the vows in there if you wish. You put the date, who attended, whatever it is. It's your document. And then you get the, the, the man and the wife will sign it. You get it witnessed. That is your personal document. And if you wish, you can file it with the court. If you file it with the court, it becomes public record. So that's one way of doing a marriage. Another way is having a family Bible. Mm. You just have a family Bible and you have a family Bible. And in that Bible, it records marriages, births and deaths within that family, family Bible. That's it. You don't get a form from somewhere else. You don't register anything. Here's another thing. People don't understand what the word register means. If you register anything, you're handing over ownership. Mm. Don't register. (laughs) That includes your house, your car, your children, your business, anything. You register with something like a government agency, Mm. you've handed over ownership. But yeah, do your own paperwork. It's so interesting. And I feel like, you you know, the brainwashing is 
it's deep because it's been so long the system you know what i mean it's been yes. living like this and when you're born into it yeah. you just you know continue as it as it is right <laughs> but um born into it. yeah and the so, yeah the what were you saying the corporate entities like with the marriage basically the difference is that it's a fiction like it's a legal and so that there's the difference between that and actually the living human yes yeah that's right so a legal fiction we'll just touch on to that a legal fiction only exists within paperwork a legal fiction all right so a legal legal remember the word legal was refers yes. to a contract yes, legal contract contract legal okay <laughs> fiction is made up Mm. Mickey Mouse is a legal fiction. He only exists on the paper, doesn't he? I, I can't actually shake hands with Mickey Mouse, doesn't live in reality. So that's what a legal fiction is. So things like government, um, National Health Service, the police, all those school, you know, they're legal fictions. You know, McDonald's, legal fiction. Yeah. Oh. Burger King, legal fiction. Mac Microsoft, legal fiction. So they only exist on paper. Now, what this legal fiction does is, and we get it, it's a little bit complicated, but only a legal fiction, which lives on paper, can mm. deal with another legal fiction. On paper. On yeah. paper. That's right. So these, these are two legal fictions, for example, two legal fictions. And um, one could be a corporation, it could be Leicester City Council or whatever council, Derby Council, whatever. That's a council. That's, that's by the way, that's another thing. All councils are corporations. Yeah. <laughs> they even have Dunn's numbers. Blows your mind when you when you find what you know Dunn's number on a, on a council. You go, how can a council be a private company, a, co a corporation? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. No different than McDonald's. Anyway, so it exists on paper. So that's the council. The council can't trade with you because it's a legal fiction, you see. Can't yeah. trade with the living breathing. That's not how it works. So I have to have another corporation so I can then trade with the Leicester Council Corporation through commerce, right? And I'm supposed to be in control of this legal fiction. Now, the legal fiction that most people don't understand that does exist is your birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're getting into this now. See, that's a big it's when, massive yeah when i read that i was like what <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you when you get into this a lot of people since 2020 yes. they get into this common law in quotes common law oh, i've got to get myself some common law so they start learning the common law and it doesn't take long before, before you learn about the birth certificate yeah and it's wow mm -hmm. that's where your legal fiction is it's your birth certificate that's where the corporation is in the all caps name, it's not you. And everything that the government tries to do to you, they're not doing it to you, you're living, breathing. They're doing it to your birth certificate. Mm. All of it. Speeding tickets, parking tickets, the whole lot. This is why, you know, if you get a speeding ticket through the post, your last name is written in all caps. Yeah. That's not you. <laughs> That's referring to your legal fiction. People don't know this, and then they open up the uh, envelope, fill out the forms, and they contract, and they go, okay. And what they're doing is they're sending a contract back to the police, so the police can now enter into commerce with your legal fiction, and then you have to pay the fee for your legal fiction. That's what's going on. So, And it's an offer to pay, by the way. All these speeding tickets and everything is an offer to pay. There is no obligation for you to pay. Mm -hmm. They can't force you to. No, wow. There is no road laws. That's another thing. No road laws. None of it. So bluff. The police are bluffing on everything. It's so interesting. Even what you said earlier about the post and how I feel like most post isn't written the way you described with the mm -hmm. signature. And what do you say as well about just like not responding? <laughs> okay. Yes. There's two things. Now there's a, a, Unable to respond is different to replying. Mm. Okay. Now, what I would always, always do, even if you get bogus documentation sent to you through the post, always reply. Okay. If you don't, they will take it as tacit agreement that you've agreed to the mail they sent you. Now, tacit agreement is basically where they assume you've agreed without saying anything. So if you've not said anything, they'll say, oh, you've agreed then, because you didn't object. 
right? So if you get something through the post, um, never ever um, ignore it. This is why so many people get into serious trouble. They just throw it in the bin and then more come. And then the next thing you know, you've got bailiffs knocking on the door and you've got a whole world of pain and you go, how do I deal with this? I get so many people contacting me and it's like, I've got to go to court next week. What do I do? And I go, oh my God, I, I can't give you an answer to that. I don't know why you're there. What's happened with the, the last six months? I have to go through the entire life. I need to know where, where it started from. I need to know what documentation you received and what did you do? Did you respond? Who you are dealing with? That's a question I can't answer. So whenever you get documentation, always reply. Now, replying does not mean answering the questions in that document. Now, that's is where people get, they make a mistake. If you want to answer the um, questions in the document, that's called a response. Now, you're responding. Right? Mm -hmm. If someone asks you a question, then you give me an answer. You're now actually responding to my question, right? Yeah. But if I ask you a question and you tell me to go do one, well, you haven't answered my question, but you are replying. You see the difference? So a reply does not necessarily mean that you are responding to the question. So if you get the documentation through, here's a little trick. But when you get like letters through the post, okay, when you get letters, don't open it straight away. Mm -hmm. People are opening it straight away, and I'm going, whoa, hold your horses. Mm -hmm. Turn the envelope over and have a look at the return address. Mm -hmm. right? Look at the return address. You might not recognize it. Go online, use the internet, Find out the return address. Okay. So once you've found the return address, then you'll know who sent it to you. Yeah. And then you make it, you can then make a decision whether or not you want to open the, the mail. Mm. Right. So you find out who sent it to you. And if it's someone you don't want to deal with or you've got no contract with, and you go, you know, it's junk mail, it's a it's a speeding ticket, oh whatever, then what you would do is you return it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So where the window is, where your your address is, make put a sticker over it, color it out, so you can't see your address, okay, anymore. If the address is addressed to you in a in a name you don't recognize, so for example, like a speeding ticket, for example, a speeding ticket, your last name will be in all caps. Yeah. Well, you'll know that's not you. So you go, well, that's not me. So that means addressee not recognized. Uh huh. So you'll go, addressee not recognized. You get a stamp out, stamp it, addressee not recognized. Return to sender. And then where the, uh, the return address is on the back, underneath there, return to sender. And then what you can do, you can either record yourself putting the mail back into a letterbox, or you can go to a post office and say, I'd like to return this. And they will give you a receipt free. It doesn't cost you anything. You get a receipt and you go, there's my proof that I actually returned it. Unopened, didn't open it, sending it back. And then you put it down in your administration costs, 350 quid. Because if I'm sending mail back, I'm charging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it for free. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go, right, okay, I'll make a note of the address on my computer. And if I get another one, I'm going to send them a notice of unable to respond. I'm going to say, look, you're sending me documentation that I can't respond to. Mm. now you owe me 350 quid for the first one and now i'm charging you 350 quid for the second one <laughs> Love that. but yes um so yeah if you do open it if you do open it um very first thing what do we check for we check for a signature yeah very simple so don't even bother reading it so you check it is there a signature and you go no there's no signature i'm not even going to bother reading it what what why why should i even bother reading it if i don't know who sent it so i'm going to send it back and i'll say I am unable to respond to the letter you sent me because it's not signed. I'm not addressing any of the points. Yeah. It's like a parking ticket. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not yeah. going to say I wasn't parked there or I was two minutes over my time. No. Yeah. no. I'm saying I can't deal with this until I get a signature. You send it back to me with a signature and a name and I'll deal with it. Yeah, and then you can deal with the person. Yes. You deal with a person. I do not deal with legal fictions. I need to know the name of the person who works for that corporation. I will deal with them. But if more and more people did this, that's standing your ground, by the way. Mm. That's not that difficult. You're not face to face with anyone. You're not getting ready for a punch up. You can do this, people. You know, if we all did this, 
that's it, it's game over. Yeah. It plugs uh, the system up. Yes. It's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when I came into the fishing, I was like, whoa, if there are a lot of people doing this, this is going to make huge change. Like, because, yes. yeah. Yes. But I think in the first place, it's realizing that it's all a con. Do you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. You've got to learn this stuff. Yeah. And it's quite like everything you said about the marriage and the birth certificate, it's very intricate. Like, how yes. did you find all this information and how it. Oof, years of, years of research. In fact, um, I didn't even know what I was looking for at the beginning. Wow. Like, I didn't know. You know, I, I knew something was wrong. And I'm just looking for, and then I'll, as I was searching, you just get tidbits of information. And you go, oh, what's that mean? And yeah. then you, 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 yeah, it's like you're, you're building, it's like I'm putting a jigsaw puzzle together, but I don't know what the picture looks like. And I don't know how many pieces of the puzzle they are. And I don't even have them all in the box. Wow. So I go out looking for the pieces and I find a piece and I go, oh, that might fit. And I go, okay, that fits in there and like that, you know. And then eventually you'll create this jigsaw picture and then you can stand back and you go, oh, no, now I know how the system works. Wow, that's so crazy. Yeah, I didn't know what I was looking for until I found it. So, yeah. and it, it took years, just snippets here, snippets there, and I put it together and then I realised what was going on and it was like, I've got to tell people, I've got to tell people what's going on. Mm -hmm. When I yeah. discovered the um, SESTA KV Trust, for example, Mind-blowing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mind-blowing. Oh, my God. I'm worth millions. And I didn't even know it. Where, when did you discover this? Because oh. this is like, what? <laughs> yes, this is a few years ago. And I was, okay. again, it's just, it's, you can't do a simple Google search. No. Doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was whispers. It was like pieces of information. I'm like, what's, what's that? You know, and I'm digging, I'm going, Okay, and then I had to learn what how a trust operates because, of course, you discover it. And I go, what's a trust? So then you got to go off, then you got to work out how a trust operates, then you come back, and then you can soak in the information some more. You know, so a lot of it is, you know, when I first discovered the term fiat currency, mm -hmm. you know, and that was years ago, and I thought, what do you mean fiat currency? What do you mean? So then that's when I went off and said, let's, let's find out what, what is fiat currency, what is it? You know, and then you 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 learn and you think, oh now I know. Um stock market, I always wanted to know how that worked. So okay, better learn how to do this. What how does the stock market operate? You know, and then I discovered how you do put options and um circuit breakers in the stock market and the plunge uh, plunge protection team. Like, that's fraud. They're manipulating the stock market. <laughs> And they call it the plunge protection team. Oh, good. But that's what you do. And so, you know, I learn this stuff. And then I'll, I'd reach, I'd just find something. And then I go, well, I don't know what that is. It's something. I don't know what it is. So I'm going to have to research what it is and then learn and then get back to it. So I was just, I just cut and paste. And I kept sort of, you know, news articles and paragraphs out of PDFs. And thought, well, that's interesting. I'll just save it for now. I don't really understand it at the minute. But I'll get back to it once I've researched more. Yeah. And that's just how it happened. And it was just, yeah. And then the next thing you know, I know how it works. And it's like, well, you know, Sesta KV Trust and the Sesta KV Trust Act of 1666, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other, there's another one, there's a decree by the Vatican in the year 1302, I think, where the Vatican decreed they owned everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you learn the truth behind the Great Fire of London. You learn about maritime law, yeah. You know, admiralty law. You know, you go what's this? and then you understand that you start learning about different jurisdictions of law. Because the average person out there just thinks that law is just one thing. Oh, it's the law. Yeah. And I go, well, hang on a minute. What jurisdiction are you talking about? Yeah. And there's different layers to it. You see. So what we're we talking about? Are we talking about federal? Mm -hmm. You know, are we talking about state? Are we talking about uh, the postal union jurisdiction? Highway code jurisdiction, they're two separate jurisdictions. They don't operate together. Um, and none of them actually apply to you anyway. So, it, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, and then you learn some of the wording, like um, citizen. Mm -hmm. Citizen means slave to the city. Wow. Zen, slave, city, city. Sla citizen, slave to the city. Wow. <laughs> 
you take their title, citizen, if you say, are you a British citizen, for example, they say, are you a British citizen, right? British is a corporation. Yeah. Citizen, slave to the city, you're actually an employee of that corporation. So if you say, yes, I am, you've accepted the jurisdiction of that corporation, and now you're liable for all the policies within that jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. The land of the free, America. No, it's not. Yeah. America. <laughs> <laughs> America is one giant PMA, private members association that's controlled by a group of men at the very top. And people don't wow. even understand. People don't even understand the difference between freedom and liberty. They think it means the same thing. No, it doesn't. Liberty is not freedom. Liberty means permission, right? You're asking permission. So you only give liberty to a child. Because the parent says what you can and cannot do. So if the parent asks, if the child asks the parent and the parent goes, yes, you're giving liberty to the child to do something. You can stay up, you can stay up late. So everyone thinks liberty means freedom. No, 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 no. It's privileges and allowances. That's what liberty means. Mm. So people go, oh, Latin. And then, um, I mean, you know, United States of America, right? United States of America. Anything with the word of in it means without. So United States of America means without the country. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bank of England. Bank of England. Wow. Bank of England means without England, the landmass England. Yeah. yeah. So you've got United States of America. Uh, that is the corporation. They have a president. Only corporations have presidents. They're telling you. But the average person doesn't understand this terminology. They have a constitution. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they have a president. Yeah. Only a corporation has a president. Yeah. President of a corporation. So it's in your face, but people think, oh, it's a country. No, no, no. Well, um, I, I think we've got to touch on the word country as well, because people don't understand what that means either. So yeah. country does not mean the land mass, the mm-hmm. land you're standing on, right? Country comes from the word county. A county refers to when a king would circle a landmass area and place his jurisdiction onto that landmass, and he would count the amount of people within that border, count, county, count, where, that's where the name comes from, and those people would be the taxpayers. So that's what a county is, right? So a county, so if someone says, "Are you, uh, you, you do you reside in this county? You say yes, then you you are saying yes. I'm a taxpayer. Mm-hmm. Now you're liable to pay tax. So a county is a group of taxpayers that the king has counted. A country is a bunch of counties. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. A country is a corporation. It's not a landmass. So people go, "Are you patriotic to your country?" Yeah. Well, the word patriot has the word pay in it. You are paying. The corporation, patriot, pay, paying, co- co- country, corporation. You're paying the corporation. So if you're patriotic to your country, then you're a an employee that pays the corporation. Mm. So yeah, the United States of America has got nothing to do with America, the landmass. It's a corporation run by a president because it's a corporation, and they even have a constitution. Where do you find constitutions? private members associations. Sorry. And then what do they say? An American citizen? Are you an American citizen? We know what citizen now means. Slave to the city. Mm-hmm. American is referring to the corporation. You go, yes, I'm an American citizen. That means you're an employee of the corporation. And what did they do? They did the Statue of Liberty as a joke. Oh, wow. Sorry, Americans. If you've got wow. some, if there's some American viewers out there, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's the joke's played on you. Sorry. That's mad. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like it gives the word freedom so much more of a definition. Like, oh, you want to be free? Yes. You know, like, let's see free. how deep you want to go. <laughs> free. free. Freedom actually means belonging. So it means you choose where you belong and who you belong to. That's what freedom means. It's your choice, right? So, for example, if you get married, a proper, genuine marriage, you know, 
Yeah. So you belong. So if you marry your husband, you belong to the husband, and the, and the vice versa. You belong to each other. So a couple, a couple belong to each other. Pa- uh, children belong to the parents. Yeah. That's a belonging. Okay. So I know uh, politicians have twisted the word belonging. You know, to make it sound like oh, I own a physical article or something. But no, freedom means belonging. It means I choose oh. who I belong to. Yeah. What do you mean? I love that. So yeah, so uh, people don't know, but yeah, liberty is um, uh, what is it? It's it's not freedom. Uh, so it means permissions and allowances. That's what liberty means. Mm-hmm. Freedom means belonging. You choose where you belong and who mm-hmm. belongs to you, and vice versa. That makes sense. That's what it is. <laughs> Just quickly, what's your understanding of the, like you said in America? It's run by a few people at the top. But I guess it's like, maybe do you see that in other parts of the world as well? Yes. Yes. All, all countries, every single country, every single one of them is a corporation. Mm. Okay. We have a few different ones here in England, the land. So let's try and explain what's, how England works. Mm-hmm. You have England lowercase, okay, Let, which is mean, means title case. So it means the capital E, the rest of it is lowercase. That refers to a title of a name. Mm -hmm. That refers to the name of the land. England, the land base, if you like. England, the land mass. The grass underneath my feet. That's the land. Then you've got England, all caps. Mm -hmm. That refers to a corporation. Just sounds the same as England, all right? Then what you've got is you've got four corporations. You've got England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. So England... Scotland and Wales are part of another corporation called Great Britain. Mm -hmm. That's another corporation. Great Britain is another corporation. Mm -hmm. Then you include Northern Ireland, which is four. That is the United Kingdom. So the United Kingdom or UK is a corporation. It's the same as McDonald's. Now, here's the problem with this. If you don't know this, if you think that the UK refers to a country like like the land, you know, if you think that and you use that term UK in any of your language, in your say you've got a website and it's nurses or something like that, or homeschooling, and you call it homeschooling UK. Mm, yeah. What you've actually done is it's not the country, the land, the landmass, yes. it's not that. You've actually taken the name of a corporation and you've applied it to your name of whatever it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. Now, in doing that, you've now accepted the policy of that corporation. You've accepted the jurisdiction of the UK. That's what you've done. So if you've got UK in your title, of your website, whatever it is, they'll come after you. It's like copyright. You're, you put UK in your title. You're, you know, your UK nurses or something like that. And, you go, well, and then you'll get people banging at your door. You'll get documentation sent through the posts and they'll say, right, you're in violation of all these regulations because mm. you've accepted it. You've used the term. UK. That's the problem. So you can't use these terms. So I'm not, I don't live in the UK. I can't. UK is a UK lives on a piece of paper. Yeah. How can I live on a piece of paper or in it? I can't. So I live in England, the landmass. And I make it clear. So I don't just say England, because some people are what, you know, cap all caps England. I go, no, England, the landmass is where I live. That's why I live. That's that's it. I don't accept the jurisdictions of all these different corporations out there. I'm not under the uh, the jurisdiction of a UK corporation. So let me just touch on the uh, acts and statutes. Right? Can I just ask quickly? Is there a yeah, difference sure. between? Because I just realised as you were saying, it's Scotland, Ireland, and it's like Finland. Is there a difference yeah. with having the word land? Because other countries don't necessarily have that. A lot of countries don't have that name. That's right. Yeah. Um, the word land, you're right, is that the it referred to the name. I mean, England was not originally called England. I think it was spelled differently. I can't quite remember. I did research it a few years ago. Um, and, of course, the name, um, like Greenland, for example, they, they call it green because it was the land of green. It was very lush, a lot of uh, trees and all the rest of it. And then land, because obviously they're referring to the land. Mm-hmm. So that's where a lot of these countries got their name from. So it was the name of the green, or the, the land of the green, yeah. green land, yeah? So England, um, I believe, could be wrong on this, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember, but it was the Angles, I think it was, the uh, the um, 
this is a tribe that um, overthrew, uh, can't remember off the top of my head, but there was a lot of fighting with clans. I believe it was the Angles, Angle Saxons or something like that. And then it became Land of the Angles or Angland, and then it became England, and that's where the name came. Um, something on that. I might be a bit off on that. It's been a few years since I researched that. But anyone watching this, go and find, you know, go and do your own research. It's quite fascinating. But yeah, all these other countries out there, they're just um, they're just names of corporations. That's it. They all operate the same, pretty okay. much the same. They either operate as a uh, corporation or in this like, in this um, country, mm -hmm. uh, they operate as a trust. Mm. That's why we have a prime minister. Awesome. The word prime minister, what do you mean minister? The word minister means administrator. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your face oh my word literally in your literally face. in your face he is the administrator of the trust the prime minister prime minister yes wow. prime administrator it's in your face so and here's another thing that might blow your mind but um parliament is a private corporation with its own duns number it's the same as McDonald's. <laughs> and people are going, oh, we've got government. I said, do you know what government really is? I don't think you do, because it's just basically one giant corporation. Same as Burger King, McDonald's, and KFC, and Microsoft, and Google, and all the rest of it. With no authority. None. So I'll, I'll go back to the acts and statutes, because yeah. a lot of people get um, caught up on that, because... Um, They'll say, oh, you've got to do this because of this act, this statute, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. All the time. And people, because they're brainwashed, they think they have to follow these, right? Well, again, let's look at the wording, right? So the act, what does act mean? Act literally means acting as law. That means it's not law. Act, acting as law, not law. Wow. Think of it like an actor, right? Yeah. So, for example, you've got, say, William Shatner. He's a real person, right? He's a real He's an actor, right? But when he's James T. Kirk, he's acting. He isn't James T. Kirk. That's not, it's not a real spaceship he's flying. It's all made up. He's acting, right? So that's why they turn around to you and say, you've got to follow this act. And, I, and all I think about is actors on a stage doing a play. And I go, it's not real then, is it? Because he's acting as law. It's not law. That's why they call it an act. Mm. And then another one is statute. Mm. Statutes only exist in a contract. Mm -hmm. And it basically comes from a contract as a dead entity, unless you're doing a living contract, it's slightly different. But if you're dealing with legal fictions, it's a dead contract, right? And what they have in there is statutes, which refers to the dead, and which is like a statue, which is dead. A statue doesn't move. You know, like you see, a statue, that's, that's where the name comes from. Statue, statue. So it's the map, uh, the language. It's the language, they trick yeah. you, yeah. they trick you. Yeah. So now here's the thing about all acts and statutes and all this, all codes, regulations, no matter what they call it, right? All of it only applies within the constitution of a corporation. So in this case, it would be the UK corporation, right? Mm -hmm. So if a judge wants to apply some of these acts and statutes to you, you'll turn around and say, well, hang on a minute, judge, are you saying that I'm an employee of this UK corporation? Because only it only applies to an employee it can't apply to me as a living, breathing man or woman. So if it, if it does, if these acts and statutes do apply to me, and you're saying that I am actually an employee of this UK corporation, then where's my salary? Why haven't I been paid? <laughs> mm. I, want to, I, want that, I want it backdated. And I want a company car, because if I'm an employee of this corporation and I've got to follow all these acts and statutes, I won't pay him. Let's start with 65,000 a year and a, and a Bentley. As a company car, come on, where is it, Judge? I'll take it, I'll take this job as an employee if you want, but I want paying and I want, I want it backdating since I became 16 when I got my national insurance number. So people don't understand this. So everyone goes, Oh, acts and statutes apply to you. No, they don't. No, they don't. They only apply to the employees of that corporation. If you've signed a contract, you go, Yeah, okay, then they apply. It's the same if you go working for McDonald's, if you work for mm -hmm. McDonald's, right? You sign a contract and say, okay. And in their constitution, if you like, they say you've got to wear a uniform, you've got to have a name tag. You've agreed to that. So if you turn up to work and you don't have your uniform on, you don't have your name tag on, then you're going to get in trouble. 
they're going to have you in the office and you're going to get reprimanded. You might lose your job or whatever, or deduct your salary or whatever it is. It's the same with the UK corporation. It's exactly the same. It's just everyone has been brainwashed to be an employee of a corporation they know nothing about. <laughs> it's a lot. What um, Have you done any digging into understanding why or, um, you know, that word? <laughs> Understand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Understanding quotes. Yeah. Oxford English Dictionary, understand. <laughs> no, I don't understand under you. I don't stand under you, but I can comprehend. Yeah. Oh, that's a good uh, word to comprehend. Comprehend, yeah. Some people say inner stand if you wish, but yes. it confuses the newbies. Yes. The thing yes. is, you know, when you learn all these new words yeah. and you try and get someone new into this, yes. it confuses them if you start saying, oh, do I inner stand and I, da, 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 you know, and, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? So you might have to just use normal language for the okay. new. <laughs> <laughs> till they get it yeah, yeah yeah and then we can teach them about the the wording yeah so it's yeah. fine you can use understand <laughs> yeah <laughs> comprehending the, comprehend yeah yeah i like that one the way the reason why this system has been set up like this and because i feel like it's kind of the whole world right it's not just yes. one the country. entire yeah. planet uh, what it is, is to make people incredibly wealthy. The, the system, uh, the whole system is designed to strip you of your wealth. Okay. And for the average person watching this, the average person, just to give you some figures, yeah. about 90% of the wealth that you generate in your entire life goes to these people who control the system. 90%. You're trying to survive on 10%. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. That's what the average person out there is trying to do. And that's why they're struggling to make ends meet. Yeah, that's what they're doing. So, and they, the, the people who control the system want that 10%, by the way. That's what this decade is all about. They want you with nothing, no car, no house, nothing. You'll live in a little cubicle that you'll pay rent on that it's owned by the state. That's what they want. You won't have a car, no holidays anymore. You won't own anything. No, you won't own your mobile phone, your computer, anything. It'll be all state owned. It'll be full communism. And you will only be able to rent them if you have um, a good social credit score. If you're a good citizen, then you will be allowed to rent these basic things. So this system is set up this way. It's been, it, this system is like two and a half thousand years old, mm -hmm. roughly, give or take. Um, and it's been stealing our wealth for, for centuries. Um, but yes, it's all based around uh, birth certificate. And it's your live birth certificate. So what you, what happens is, is when you're born, your parents are tricked. They don't know what they're doing, okay? But they actually literally give you away at birth. That's what they've done, all right? You were abandoned. All hospitals um, in, in all these countries, if it's a state-run hospital, if it's state-run, then it is a foundling maternity hospital. A foundling means something that's been abandoned. So when you give birth, you go to these state hospitals in a maternity ward. By the way, the word ward means you've awarded your authority over a ward. So, yeah, same as a prison ward. Mm. You've got to ask yourself, why do you have a hospital ward and a prison ward? Mm. Same thing. So in a prison, you've awarded your authority away. You, you no longer have your authority. You are a ward to the state. The state has authority over you. Hospital ward, same thing. So you. this is why a lot of people... I've realized what's going on with the national health. There's a lot of um, mothers who have given birth and then they're not allowed to see their own kids. Mm -hmm. They've seen the videos and you go, what's going on? And I said, you contracted, you, you agreed to this. You were tricked. It's mm -hmm. not a lawful or legally binding contract. Let me get that straight from the very beginning. This is not how contracts are supposed to operate. But because yeah. you went into the hospital and you signed the paperwork, again, you signed their forms. The consent. You their forms, yeah. You've consented. So yeah, the parents are tricked. They hand over the child at birth, um, the footprint of the child, the soul, uh, <gasps> soul, soul, yeah, soul, the spirit. Wow. Soul of your foot, yeah, soul is the spirit. That's where the word comes from. The soul of the foot is usually placed against the contract, usually with ink or a prick of the blood. Oof. Okay, probably placed on uh, place. That's a contract. So the baby itself, even though it's not, it hasn't reached the age of consent which means the age of consent means you can now consent to entering into a contract. 
Mm-hmm. Just they don't care. Even though the child is a few hours old, they use the soul, they steal the soul, and then put that on the contract, and then they own the child. The child is placed into a trust, layman's terms, yeah. and they create the live certificate of birth. The live certificate of birth is used to create credit. Think of it like a credit card in my name. Yes. That's what it is. Unlimited credit. And then they create a corporation, which is the birth certificate, which is the mm-hmm. birth of your corporation. Mm-hmm. They trick you into thinking that's you. Mm-hmm. And the corporation is the debtor. So you are the creditor. You create the credit. But then they trick you into being the creditor, as uh, the debtor as well. Literally for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what you do throughout the entire life. Is you create you create the credit, and the credit that is being created is in the millions. And then you, throughout your entire life, you are also forced to become the debtor, and then you pay it all back in taxes. And that's what's going on. You're paying back your own credit. There's no mortgage debt. There's no student loan debt. There's no credit card debt. Always another thing. Better touch on credit cards. Mm debit cards mm-hmm. um direct debit mm-hmm. every time you use these you are actually creating brand new credit in your name yeah you're not paying anything so this is how it happens say you use a debit card you buy a pair of jeans it's 50 quid mm-hmm. you use your debit card and you go okay here's the 50 quid the the debit the bank is using your name to create the credit so in that moment the credit is created the credit is then used to buy those pair of jeans. You get the pair of jeans, right? Yeah. And what happens is, is that um, the bank is on the hook. To, they, they are the debtor. They have to pay that back. They don't want to do that. So they make you the debtor and then they take it out of your bank account. So you created the credit to buy those jeans. You, you basically create a brand new credit. Never existed. That 50 quid did not exist. You've just created that 50 quid. You bought the pair of jeans on your name. And they've also just taken another 50 quid at your bank account. You're now down 100 quid. <laughs> That's why so many people are poor. How does that work with the credit and also with the birth certificate? Why is it that there is that credit there? Yes. Now, we don't use money, okay? No money exists on this planet. Oh, well, actually, the only form of money that does exist is like this is a silver coin. All right? That is money. Real money. I think we better touch on what money is so people understand what's going on. Mm. Money, there's two, two uh, fundamental pieces to a money, two, two fundamental parts, if you like. One of them, it has to have intrinsic value. That's the silver. The silver has value, okay? The other is a person's labor. So this silver was under the ground one day. It was, you know, so someone had to dig it out of the ground, melt it, turn it into a coin, and then give it to me, if you mm-hmm. like. Okay, so that's the labor, because clearly this coin is worth more than the silver in the ground, because I'm going to have to dig it out and I don't want to yes. do that. So that's where the labor comes into it. Okay. And then the intrinsic value is the silver, because I want the silver. The silver has real value. So that's true money. There is no third party risk, right? Which means there's no third party involved. So if I buy something from you and I give you a silver coin, the trade is just between me and you. There's no third party involved, like a bank taking yeah. a slice you know and they're taking a, a a transaction fee yeah okay so that's money we don't use money anywhere on this planet does not use so let's go back to this this you... has third party risk mm-hmm. yeah carry on what did you say yeah because ultimately like if without the bank you create something right and someone will buy it from you yes and then you that's what you're you're creating the credit i guess correct you are creating something. That's right. Um, and that is why money, and we have to distinguish the difference between money and fiat currency. Money is good. True money is good. In fact, if it was, in fact, I will say there's two inventions that mankind has invented that are absolutely essential. One is the wheel, and the other one is money. If we didn't have those, we'd still be living in a cave. Mm. We'd have nothing. All right. So people go, oh, money is the root to all evils. No, it isn't. The currency is mm-hmm. that's different. This third party risk is worthless. All right, this is a, a contract, if you like, it's not even yours. Even when you get it, even if you work and then you are given it, it's still not yours. It's owned by the Bank of England. 
The corporation has got their name all over it. Corporation owns it. It's mm-hmm. a note of debt. Mm-hmm. So money is the creation of something of value. Yes. Okay. Wow. That's what That's it is. a different definition. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. So when people wake up to that, oh, okay, because it's value. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, a silver coin. It could be a necklace, a silver necklace. That has value. You've created it. Someone dug the silver out of the ground or gold or whatever. It could be copper. Could there be anything? Or what about um, wood? You know, you've got an old bit of rotten wood or something you find in the um, the woods. Not really worth a great deal. It might be worth firewood if that. But if you carve it up, you know, put it on yeah. a spinning wheel and you turn it into a lovely bowl and you polish it and you wax it, there you go. It's got real value now because you put the label in. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Money is the creation of something of value, which people want, and then they will trade. Yes. So someone will make that's what the trade is, yeah. Yeah. And then when you start trading, um, this is when people start to specialize. So the guy who built the bowl, okay, he might have built the bowl, he got a bit of old wood from the wood, and he made the bowl, and then he's made this bowl and he's exchanged it. It could be a baker, and he's given him a whole loads, loads of bread or something. We'll do a we'll do a swap. We'll do a trade. And then the baker goes, okay, then because I he, the bake the baker values the bowl more than his bread. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the guy with the bowl values the bread more than the bowl. So they trade. Yeah. They both do good out of it. They are now both better off. Mm. You see, because they've now got something that they value more. And this is the foundation of mankind and today we've got cameras and i can talk to you on the other side of the country and i've got plasma tvs and screens and i've got yeah because people are trading something for value for value not this this is sucking the wealth out of us so how does the bank come into it oh right yeah the bank so the bank they are power sites (laughs) <laughs> they are parasites, right? They don't want to work. They don't want to contribute, and they don't contribute. They literally suck out this foundation of wealth that we create. That's what they're doing. This is why. Look at the poverty. Look at the third world. Look at people, even in this country now. Yeah. But they can't run their cars, right? This is the mistake that people have done. They've been brainwashed to accept this. This is a contract. It's not. It's owned by the Bank of England, which is a corporation. It is a a promissory note, a promise to pay. And that's what we're all, that's what we're using. We're just passing it around. I promise to pay, I promise to pay. But it's never paid. Mm -hmm. So the debt gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And as the debt gets bigger, more interest has to pay the debt. That's why interest rates are so low. So, and people end up paying out more. Okay. So, Going into this is quite a deep sort mm-hmm. of conversation. You know, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it takes many levels to understand why this is so evil. Mm-hmm. And it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for, I mean, if you use um, debit cards or some, you know, like PayPal or something like this, they're yeah. taking commission, oh. you know, and all this sort of stuff. So this gets devalued. Now, let's make it simple then. Let's say, let's say, you do some work for me, and I and we trade. It's a yeah. proper trade. And I give you silver coins, and you put that those silver coins right, and you bury it in your garden, and it stays there, and it for ten thousand years. Mm-hmm. And then some spaceman in the future digs up your garden and finds those silver coins. The value's still there because mm-hmm. it's the silver. If I give you this, you work for me, and I you do a job for me. I give you this it starts to devalue very quickly. Mm. So if you do the same thing, if you bury this in your garden and it's worth 10 quid in value, you know, that might buy you a couple of drinks behind the bar. In about five years' time, it's going to be worthless. You won't even get two drinks behind the bar. You'll get nothing. Yeah. And if once, if the government turns around and says, this is no longer legal tender, yeah, it's suddenly nothing. Yeah. Look at Weimar Republic, images of that, where the people threw the notes into the street and they're sweeping it up like rubbish. 
Mm. You won't do that with silver coins. It's always going to have value or gold coins or anything like that. It will always have value. This is worthless. Here's the thing, you know, pound coin, pound coin. The metal content in a pound coin is worth around 3p. Wow. So if you've got two, 2p coins, which is four quid, they're worth more than the pound coin. That's crazy. So, and they're probably going to be worth it. It's a good little tip. Keep hold of your copper coins, by the way, because in um, hyperinflation, the copper value goes up. Oh, wow. Mm. The pound coin won't because the metal in that's not worth a great deal. <laughs> yeah. This, so just back to what you said about the birth certificate, that's related to, as well to the Seska V, right? That's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Q. Yeah. Yeah. Sister K V Trust. That's right. Okay. That's so, right. I mean, I remember quite, when I, I don't know, I was just questioning things, thinking, you know, why is it that, like, I'm born into the world with nothing, you know? It didn't really make sense. So I feel like I can understand that, but. What, what is the whole concept of that there's a trust? Do you know what I mean? To everyone yeah. that's born. Well, <laughs> the way they do it is um, you've probably heard of it. You know, rich people, they normally set up a trust fund yes, for their I children. Do, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what that means is a trust fund basically is they will put money into it. And then at the end, when the, the child is 21, They'll be they'll have access to the trust fund and then that will set them up for you know could buy a house and all the rest of it and they're good to go. Now the elites, if you like, the power parasite class, the uh, royalty, they use trusts. They don't use wills and um, to pass on their wealth to the next generation. If you use a will, then you will pay inheritance tax. Yeah. You don't want to use that. So what you do is you put it into a trust, and then when you pass on and you give your wealth to your children they get it all 100 because they get given the key to the trust they are yes. now the beneficiaries you go there you go that's how the Rothschilds do it and all the rest of it and this is how the vatican operates so the vatican takes you when you were born and places you in a trust now the vatican turns around and says um we're going to do this we're going to look after you official <laughs> narrative yeah yeah all right and they weigh you OK, so that's the, the reason why they weigh you is they work out what your weight in gold is. That's mm. where the terminology worth oh. your weight in gold comes from. Wow. Yeah. So they weigh you. You're worth so many pounds and ounces in gold. They put that in the trust for you. So when you're born, that gold goes into the trust sitting mm. there. And what you're supposed to do is when you turn 21, you get a key. You know, how everyone gets a key when they turn 21. Yeah, and no one really knows why. Why do I get a key when I turn 21? Because that's the key to your trust fund. Wow. <laughs> You're supposed to open your trust fund and get your gold out. <laughs> no one does. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then throughout your entire life, what happens is, is you keep paying into the trust. Yeah, and why does that happen? Like, they've okay. purposely set it up like that, right? Yes. So the way it works <laughs> is we have to try and think about credit and debt yeah okay credit and debt not money i know it's difficult because we quantify everything in a value yeah. like 10 pounds 20 pounds right so credit and debt so the best way to understand what a credit and a debt is think of it like a favor mm -hmm. so if you do me a favor i owe you one back mm -hmm. that's easy to understand so you are the creditor because you give me, you do a favor for me you've given me a credit mm -hmm. i am now in debt to you i owe you a favor back i am the debtor OK, so what happens is, is they set this trust up and they use your name, your living, breathing name to create credit. They use this credit throughout your entire life to build the roads, pay for the electricity, pay your car tax, pay your um, car insurance, sorry, pay your car insurance, pay gas, build the hospitals, everything. Everything's paid for, the lot. Everything is paid for using the credit based on your name. Now, what happens is, is all this credit is created. And then they'll trick you into pay back into paying back your credit. Right. So every time you pay a bill, mm. electricity, gas, um, yeah, all this, you're paying back your own credit. Right. So you're paying it into mm -hmm. your trust. You're paying into it. Now, while you are alive, the Vatican cannot touch that trust. So all that money you're putting in, they can't touch that. 
because it's yours. You haven't claimed that trust yet. It's sitting there waiting for you to claim. So the banker can can't claim it. So throughout your entire life, say you get a mortgage, 250,000, okay? So you, you want 250,000 mortgage, right? Well, that 250,000 is taken out of your trust. You've created that using your name. That's credited, 250,000. Mm. You buy the house. The mortgage company is actually the debtor. They're supposed to pay your trust back. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do that, man. So they trick you into yes. becoming the debtor. You're okay. paying back your own favors. But the mortgage company can't touch those payments. It makes commission on the interest, all right? So the mortgage company makes the interest on the payments you're making, 2%, 5%, whatever it is. All those payments you make on your mortgage, student loan, no matter what it is, car loan, is going back into your trust fund. It's sitting there until you die. And when you die, you didn't collect that trust fund to the Rothschild banking system does. So every time someone dies, they come in there and scoop up a few million quid. Wow. That's wow. what's going on. But and, <laughs> yeah, let's go on. That's mad. So I think I'm getting it now. It's kind of like a, a complete reframe of the way the money is seen, really. But then does it actually, like, it actually goes into the trust fund? Yes, when you make your payments back. When you make the payments, it goes back into your trust fund. It just sits there, going back up. It's like a, a ledger. I think your trust fund is like a ledger. So the credit comes out, then the debt comes back in. Your payments goes back in just to balance it all out. Sort of thing. Mm. And it just sits there. And then you don't know about it. You don't collect on it. And then, of course, you die. And then it, the trust fund, the money goes to the Rothschild banking system. And that's the reason why they are worth something like $500 trillion. I mean, it's not, like, how do you even find this information? It's so crazy. <laughs> it's deep. You will not find this on the internet. There were some good websites. They're gone now. You get error 404, they've been taken down. Wow. So the, the internet is being censored. This, this information is not out there. But the information is um, sort of there. They can't get rid of all of it. Um, I'll give you a little tip. Your birth certificate. Mm-hmm. Everyone can check this out. Okay, okay. Have a look at your birth certificate. It will say Crown Copyright. Mm. And you go, well, hang on a minute. If it's my birth certificate, then how can some corporation have a copyright on it? All right? That's not how it works. Because if it was mine, I would have the copyright. If it's my birth certificate, it would be my copyright. But it's the Crown Corporation's copyright. And you go, what's going on there? And that's because the Crown Corporation own that birth certificate mm-hmm. and they've got a copyright on it. So, yeah, it's on there. It's in your face. There's a lot of stuff and it's, yeah, people it's, just got to look at it. It is, yeah. And then how is, like, I know the Vatican, how's that related to the Rothschild? Like... That's deep. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a big question you've asked. Um, like a friend of mine, Peter Wilson, okay, yeah. he's really good on this stuff. He knows the history. Okay. Yeah, you should check him out. Very cool. um, he will go through the whole history. It's two and a half thousand years of history, you know. Um, but basically, I'm going to just give, I'm just going to give you the basics here. Yeah, sure. Is um, the the Vatican itself? Uh, the way they do it is they say the Vatican says that they speak for the Word of God, okay? And because they they can they speak on the Word of God, they own everything because they say the God owns everything god owns the planet and we just have use of it within a trust so the vatican turns around and says well we are we speak for god so therefore we own everything so they the vatican then says we can use everything in this trust but we have to pay layman's terms so um we are we are we're we're supposed to be the beneficiaries but they switch it and make us the trustees but again you've got to understand trust that's another topic yes um don't don't want to go too deep on that but what's going on is the vatican themselves don't want to be on the hook for the monetary system all right mm. because the person who creates the monetary system are the debtors of the trust mm-hmm. all right because if you understand how it works remember you the living breathing we're the creditor right we're the creditor we are in this fiat system okay that means that the uh, Rothschilds are the debtors. So the Rothschilds are on the hook 
So they're the ones who are supposed to pay it back. They don't do that. We've got this scam going where we are tricked into paying back the debt. Yes. Okay. Now, if we don't pay back the debt, yeah. the Rothschilds are on the hook for that. Mm-hmm. And they're in trouble with the Vatican because the Vatican says you can have the ability to print money money on this planet. So the, the, the Rothschilds don't run this system. They just act as an agent to the Vatican. Mm-hmm. They've been given that. It says, yes, you can create the world's currency, but you are the debtors. So, but that's what's going on. Because uh, uh, there's different banks that create currency, right? Because yes, they all do it, but they're all controlled by the Rothschild banking system. Oh, wow. Okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah, every central bank. You have a central bank. Yeah. Bank of England is a central bank. Okay. Uh, Federal Reserve is a central bank. All right. So every central bank is controlled by the uh, Rothschild banking system. Wow. I think there's only three countries that don't have a central bank. I think um, one of them Syria, I think. Okay. One might be Iran, I think. And the other one might be North Korea. I might have that right or wrong. I don't know. But everything, I think there's... Um, wow. Again, it depends how many countries you talk about. Some countries aren't recognised, so there's about, what, 202, 206 countries, depending on who you talk to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's wars going on and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. But roughly, roughly out of all that, I think the Rothschild banking system has 197 central banks wow. out of those countries yeah so if you've got a central bank this is Rothschild money and if you don't if you don't you're probably still under some form yeah. of um trust yeah it's yeah, still yeah. not got any value to it yeah um it's still fiat um but you are fiat it's fiat to the government so the government has control okay. it's a okay. bit like what hitler wanted to do in the second world war mm. Because he wanted to uh, step out of the Rothschild banking system mm-hmm. and he wanted to basically operate his own monetary system. Mm-hmm. And that's why Second World War began. Yeah, but it's still the same. Still, yeah, it's a still yeah. it's still slavery. Yeah. It's still the same. You know, I don't care if it's the Rothschilds or whether it's yeah. Hitler. Or, yeah, they're still stealing my wealth. Yeah. And so have you heard any stories about people actually uh, regaining access to their trust fund from birth? I have. I have. Um, wow. I've never met any of them or spoken to them. Um, apparently, there are some people who have done it. Wow. Um, it's a quest. It's not easy. Um, it's like an Indiana Jones sort of thing. You're going to have to wow. be a... Yeah. Sounds like a, Wow. Years of work. Paperwork, um, research. Um, but some people have done it. Um, yeah, that is a masterclass on its own. I don't even think I would... I know bits, but... I don't know. I don't. I don't even know enough to do it myself. I don't even know if I want to. Why? Because um, I know how the system operates anyway, and I know that the trust fund is actually based on fiat. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I might spend several years getting hold of my trust fund, which is based in fiat, and then mm. there might be a hundred million in there, and a hundred million in fiat gets me a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hope <laughs> so. You know, I don't know. Yeah, there's a different way. There's different. I mean, one of the things you can do is you can you can do it a little bit more simply. Instead of yes. taking control of the actual live birth certificate itself, instead of taking control of that, you can. It's still not easy, but you can take control of your corporate birth certificate. Mm-hmm. That's easier. Still a lot of work. You can take control of it. You can put your live name on it. You can you become the director of it. You turn it into a limited company. There's a lot of things you can do. Then you you're no longer uh, uh, you can send you can make your limited company dormant. You're no longer liable to pay tax at that point. So that's the end of that. Um, there's things you could do. I mean, the, I think one of the easiest ones you can do is the electricity and the gas meters. Yes. Which obviously, if you fit your own meters, you no longer pay the uh, debt brokers. You don't have to. Mm. Because everyone, see, you're double dipping. You're not, you're not you're, you're electric in your gas. Mm-hmm. Your electric in your gas and your water has already been paid for using the trust. Your mm-hmm. trust fund paid for it, right? That's created a debt. The treasury has paid for your electricity and your gas using your name. You pay for it. The treasury sells the debt to a utility company. They're debt brokers. They mm-hmm. sell you the debt to you. Think You think it's a bill for electricity. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's just debt. And then you enter into an agreement and say, yeah, I'll just pay you back. Yeah. 
Well, you can terminate that. You say, you know what? I don't want to deal with a debt broker. So you take your own meters out, you fit your own in, and that's it. You just don't deal with the um, utility companies. So now I'm, I've already paid once. I'm not paying a second time. Yeah, and also I think isn't it something as well like electricity is connected to the grid, grid anyway, right? And it's coming. Yeah. So. Yes, the national grid. Um, in all the power stations, everything, all of it is paid for by us. Mm. We bought it. We paid for it. all the bricks, all the labour, our trust fund paid for it. all the cabling, everything you see, that all the infrastructure, the, the national grid. We we paid for that. The same as the roads, we paid for it. your um, vote tax does not pay. For building of the roads mm. it does not in fact they, they call it a road fund license now oh, wow so you're paying you're funding a license to use the roads that's why it's called road fund license you're not paying for the roads yeah there's a lot of it's like yeah a lot of trickery thinking yeah. this is what's happening when actually this is not what's happening at all and then it makes you feel bad when you don't pay for it yeah that's because people think it's a bill it's like your council tax. Yes, that's good. It's got ask. nothing to do with emptying your bin. That's paid for. Paid for. It's nothing. I paid for it once. Why should I pay for it again? Yeah. So, yeah, when you wake up to this, I'm just being scammed. Yes. Council tax is a complete scam. Yeah. You're paying for uh, MPs' pensions. You're paying for low bow loans. You're paying for military accounts. You're paying for um, MPs' offshore investment accounts. You're paying for... There's um, some of these uh, councilmen have set up their own uh, companies like uh, utility companies and they're making money on the side. Wow. You just got a dick. So you, it's got nothing to do with cutting the grass or emptying your bins. That's paid for using your trust. So, yeah, and when people wake up to this, they go, well, why do I need to pay again? You don't. Mm -hmm. So don't pay a second time. Your trust fund yeah. has already paid for it. So rather than try and get hold of that birth certificate, the live one, I'd just say, you know what, forget about that. Let them use it. Yes. If they want to pay for everything, fine. I'm just not going to be paying for the debt. Yeah. Yeah, because I think there's a, there's like some people say to reclaim your birth certificate and some people are like, what? it doesn't matter. Just get on with it. But yeah, leave it to one side. You can play with the birth certificate if you wish. Um, it depends how far you want to go. Um, you can turn your name into, name into a limited company. Yeah. Um, there's things you can do that will protect you from these parasites within corporations that you can do with your birth certificate. I'll probably be doing some of that in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a you don't really need it. You can turn your, a lot of people are caught up in it and they think that the birth yeah. certificate is them. And I go, yes. no, it's not you. Yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. living breathing. That certificate wasn't even mine. It's yes. got nothing to do with me. Yes, because that's what I kind of was getting to understand. It's it's on a piece of paper anyway if i could still now act like this is still me and yeah. that's not yeah yeah that's it. <laughs> i never agreed and when you challenge it you, you turn around and say well okay then who says that that birth certificate is me yes and no one will yeah so you step out the legal fiction land and you say who um, says yeah <laughs> i love that but yeah that's a mindset thing so get out the legal fiction land yes yes who says I mean, a lot of it is mindset, I find. It is. But it's learning the language, learning the ways of the trickery so that you can really, really understand and like really... You understand, yeah. Yeah, and empower yourself, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, also, so you were saying about what's to come mm -hmm. with this whole uh, Klaus Schwab agenda. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's funny because I feel like that, it, it seems like there's not so many people involved with it. Do you know what I mean? Only a small group of people. Yeah. Only a small group of people. So um, Klaus Schwab is sort of right because he says you will own nothing because you don't. Because everyone, like I say, if you yeah, if yeah. you registered your car with the EVLA, you've handed over ownership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't own your house, even if you've paid off the mortgage because you've got a deed, it's a statutory deed. It's not a deed of property. It's not an, a loyal title deed or a superior deed. You've got a deed to a lot, not land. So most people don't understand all these legal terms. So they've been tricked. They don't even own their own children. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. You put your children in school and let's say that you take your children out of school and go on holiday. You come back and the headmaster sends you a fine. And you go, how the hell can the headmaster send me a fine for taking my own kids out of school and going on holiday? That's because you don't own the kids. Mm. That's why the school, the state owns them. But 
again, all of these are fake contracts. You are not given informed consent. You are not told about it. You are tricked. So none of these contracts are legally or even lawfully binding. Mm-hmm. You can take everything back and mm-hmm. no one can say anything. So you take your car back, you deregister it. Take your business back, deregister it. Take your house back, you deregister it. Take your children back, deregister. The trick to this is to deregister. Notice a termination. You terminate all deals or all dealings in commerce with all these corporations. Mm-hmm. Just terminate. That's it. Not going to deal with you anymore. Mm. Take everything back. Mm. And if enough people do that, it's game over. Yeah, I was just going to ask, with that agenda playing out, it's like this simultaneous thing. Where do you see the other paths that we can be creating? You know. Well, the future is not set. We don't know. Um, I do know that we're entering into hyperinflation. Mm. More and more people are really going to struggle to make ends meet. They are going to be struggling and they're going to be looking for answers. The answers are there. So it's up for the people, it's up to the people to find the answers. We're helping. I, I am a part of a group of many people. I'm not the only one saying this. There's many, many other groups out there saying the same thing. Yes, there's, yes. There's, there's loads, you know. So the information is out there. You know, um, so join, learn, spread the word. And you'll be you'll survive this decade. You'll survive the great reset. If you've got yourself some silver and gold coins. I love that. <laughs> yeah, mm. you'll be fine. Mm. So get connected. And what I'd just like to say, you know, before we uh, shoot off or anything, is that um if you are interested, if you want to learn more, um, there's a couple of things out there. We get a lot of emails and people are asking for Zooms, you know, they want me to do a Zoom online, like once a week sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're interested in that, if you'd like to do that, if you want to be a part of it, um, on our website, we've, we've asked people to just drop their name and just say, yes, we're interested. So if we get a good like list of people who genuinely are interested in doing a, a Zoom once a week, and I can do like a training course or a workshop online and help you with all this, um, if enough people do that, I'll set that up and I'll do a weekly thing on that. Okay, so if you're interested in that, jump on the website. Mm-hmm. And also what we're doing is I hold a workshop every Thursday um, where people turn up, roughly 100, 120 people. And we go through all this every week and we learn together. So if you would like to hold your own sovereign workshop wherever you are and you want to learn how to do this, um, drop us, in, drop us uh, an email, get, in, get involved, put your name down on the website because we are going to set up a training course And we'll give you some PowerPoints and a folder with all the information in it. And then you can do your own sovereign wow. workshop. That's so you want. cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you want to do it, That's put your name down. If you know people who want to do it, get involved. Mm. Thank you. Thanks for that. I mean, I like I said earlier, I learned so much just from your website. Thanks. Just re- read everything, you know? Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so helpful. And thank you so much for learning. No I problem. feel like you're so well informed because of all the years of research you've done. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just took years and years. Yeah. So um, I'm glad you got something from it. Yeah, thank you. What um, I was just going to ask, I feel like a lot of what you're doing is very like physical here in this world. Do mm-hmm. you also see how it's related to like the spiritual, to your, our soul, you know, this kind of slave? Yeah, System. it could be something to that. It's a, a, a spiritual war, mm. you know, good versus evil, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't claim that I know all the answers to that. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. Um, but yeah, I do think there's something to that. Um, the evil people in this world, they have no uh, compassion, empathy. Uh, they don't know love or anything like that. These people who are behind the system are, they're not part of mankind right that they, they they can't be um, no one can actively murder so many people and steal so much wealth and still look look in the mirror and, and do this sort of stuff so no the people we're going up against are evil beyond evil um, when you look at some of the things of what they're actually doing it's i don't even know how they could do it you know so there's a lot of us now the good people we're standing up because we're not putting up with it. Yeah. And we need more people to stand up and do that. Yeah. The more of us who stand up, the more of us who set up a website, talk about it, do the mm-hmm. podcast, 
come up with real solutions. Mm. There's, there's too many commentators out there doing them doom and gloom. I don't want any more doom and gloom. Thank you. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's have solutions, please. <laughs> yeah. And the solutions as well is not necessarily the typical way that you would expect them to be. You know, no. like coming and marching in the streets and like, no, no. That, you know what I mean? And like signing petitions and well. <laughs> not good. Yeah. Protesting and petitioning, not good ideas. Sorry to say. Because what you're doing is you're legitimizing government that doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. Governments love it when you protest and petition. They love it. So the way that you win this is each individual person has their own battle. Everyone stands up as an individual and you deal with your small little battle. It could be the policeman has pulled you over for speeding. You could be dealing with him. It could be a parking ticket. It could be the council tax or it could be the electric meters. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. That then it's not so overwhelming because then it's just your small little battle. Mm -hmm. Everyone could do that, and if you part of the network, because we've got over what we're getting up five hundred people now where I live. That's part of this our own internal little network. We've got over eight thousand worldwide now, wow. and it's growing. So you're not alone. Yeah, you know if you've got an issue, we we hold a Sunday. We call it a chess club. So every Sunday we meet up and if people got problems with their paperwork, whatever it is, we all get together, we help each other, we, we're putting together remedies mm. and solutions. And, you know, if bailiffs come knocking on your door, I know I can make a phone call and a hundred people will turn up mm. outside my house. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to sue the bailiff for doing an unlawful attempt to force me into a contract mm -hmm. and take him for every penny. That's the plan anyway. Yeah, I love it. It's like very much on the ground, from yes. the ground. That's, yes, yeah. it is. It yeah. is. So everyone's got to do their bit then. The more yeah. of us who do something, the easier it is for the rest of us. It is a numbers game. Mm, love it. Mm, amazing. Thank you so much. So I normally end on this question, but you kind of answered it earlier. Okay. But if you want to add any more, I always ask, what does freedom mean to you? Well, yes, I've answered that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Belonging. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is, belonging. And um, I choose who I belong to, and I choose who belongs to me. That's my friends, that sort of stuff, right? That's how it works. Um, but that's what it means, freedom. Um, freedom is unlimited to the point of violating the freedoms of someone else. Mm -hmm. right? So my freedom, I can do whatever I want unless I cause harm against someone else. That's when, that's the limitations of my freedom. Mm. So, and yeah. if we all live by that, um, that mindset, you know, do no harm, keep your word and help your fellow sovereign. Mm -hmm. If we just did that, there'll be no wars. There'll be no, no um, poverty, mm. no more government. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, freedom comes with responsibility. It does. Yeah. And I think sometimes this is what other sometimes can be hard to to like really gauge is that you know people think we need the government to be able to live to go you know otherwise it will just be chaos. <laughs> I know, and it's the opposite because mm. it's the government that causes all the chaos to begin with. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and when people wake up to that, yeah, then I we'll mean, have a chance. Yeah, I remember just one time thinking. You know, why is it that when I look around me and all the, my friends, they're not as like delusional as some of the people that are like in those positions. So I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, I see it all the time. I, I see people walking down the street, even today, wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> it's been two years now. I know. If you haven't figured it out by now, there's no hope for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, surgical masks the blue ones walking down the street and I'm going, I don't even know where to begin. Mm. <laughs> but that's, that's another topic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah. There's definitely, like, I feel like this is the split and I just feel like yeah. we know where we're going. <laughs> yes, that's right. We, we leave them alone. Um, mm. I always say the door is always open at the Sovereign mm. Project. Door is always open. It will welcome everybody. All right. If you've made mistakes, it's not a problem. If you took the, you know, if you took the jab, whatever, and you've realised you made a mistake, come on in. The door is always open, even for people who want to 
leave the door still open, we can come back in, it's not a problem. But I will only help those who want to help themselves. Yeah. Right? I am not babysitting anyone. I am not helping those who will not do any work. All right. If people just say, do this for me, do that. I don't, I can't do this. I can't do that. I go, do you know what? The Southern Project's not for you then. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be people who are yeah. responsible. And exactly. if they want to learn, I'll help them. But I'm not doing yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. There's mm -hmm. no other way. What... No other way. Yeah. You're right no other way so what does it mean to really be sovereign <laughs> well yes yeah, sovereign is you will know it when it happens to you you can't fake it all right there's too many people out there say yeah i'm sovereign and then they start asking me permission can i do this can i do that and I go, if you're sovereign then why are you asking permission of course go and do it <laughs> as long as you're not doing any harm so um no it will happen to you it's a state of mind it's it's like an awakening mm -hmm. You will, you will be reborn, if you like. All right? That's when you realize you're not a doormat anymore and you will not be told what to do. All right? And you won't ask questions like, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? Or you know, whatever it is. Can I open a business? Can I do? Of course you can open a business. Go and open a business. You know, do I need permission to this? Do I, do I need a license for that? Well, if you're asking those questions, you're not sovereign. Mm. You can't fake it. But you'll know when it comes to you um, because you'll know that I do not need to ask permission Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah and i'm guessing you ask yourself the questions and then the answer will come because you already have that state of mind yes yeah. yes <laughs> but that's what it means amazing i love that <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah thank you so much uh i'm gonna put your website and everything in the link definitely check it out there's I feel like there's so much super helpful information there That'd be great. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, leave the link there and people can sign up to it, share the website, download the information. It's free. Uh, put your name down if you're interested in the Zoom or the Train the Trainer Day. We'll, put, we'll make it happen. If enough people put the name down and they're interested, we'll make it happen. That's what it's about now. Yes. Yeah, action. <laughs> That's right. No more doom and gloom. Solutions and action now. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. No problem anytime. I felt like, yeah, I learned so much from this. So I hope other people also have the same <laughs> insights. I'm glad. Bless. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and to this podcast. We hope that you can gain many insights through the art of listening. If you haven't already, we would love it if you can follow us on YouTube, on Instagram, and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts if that feels right for you. We've also just launched our first online course, Awakening 101 a ninja's guide to navigating your spiritual awakening which is led by me and is offered by a donation so if you feel called to that then please dive in it's available via our website thank you